Yeah, I just said, it was just a, uh, a thought, and yeah, now it is a question. It's like, does God only use anyone who's, who's ready? Yeah. So if, because mm. in, in, in the New Testament, even in the Old Testament, people like Deborah, uh, God used them because there was no man to, to stand up. There was uh, another lady who killed uh, a general or a king because uh, men were afraid to to go into war and to, or to kill the king, and then God gave gave a woman a king to the woman, and the woman killed it, that person. That's what's going on, on the, to my mind, faster. And secondly, on uh, on the issue of women not preaching or not speaking, uh, I think Paul said also somewhere that he. He didn't com commend the same thing to other churches. So women not preaching was particularly to that church based on the question they asked him and what was going in. So we should not generalize uh, the scriptures. We, sh we should read them based on yeah how, how they are written, where they are written, and why they are written, and to whom, I think. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, God can use anybody. Just a willing heart is what he's looking for. Um, and uh, yeah, one more thing that you said is, uh, you know, that it's it, like not in the other churches, right? So that's uh, a, an additional point there. And I'll, I'll talk about it. But before that, I saw that uh, I think Samuel has been removed from the meeting. I don't know how that happened, but I got a message saying he's been removed. Uh, so if, if you all, if you are on a group, could you please ask Samuel to join back? I don't know how that happened. I, I didn't remove, but he's been removed from the meeting. So someone could please invite him back. That would be great. Mm. And uh, just a clarification, uh, while I was uh, uh, sharing the um, section on women in ministry, I got a little confused of whether Halda is Isaiah's wife. So in what I said, it sounds like she's his wife, but actually, no. Uh, I, I just kind of uh, che double checked it again. Um, so my apologies. Okay, so Isaiah's wife is another prophetess, but Halda is another prophetess. So I uh, yeah, just want to clarify that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mangi, the other churches, right? Mm, I think that that uh, passage is also an interesting one because that's about head coverings, uh, where uh, in the Corinthian church, uh, Paul tells the women to have a head covering. You know, and uh, I know that many churches practice that as well. But towards the end of that passage, he says that we don't have any such. Uh, we don't have any you know, such practice in our other churches. So that's about head covering. And that again, because there is a context to it. You know, the Corinthian women, uh, they would uh, do up their hair and all. And, uh, and you know, so many things are uh, there ex to explain for that. Uh, but he makes it clear at the end of the passage. I think it is the same passage, you know, First Corinthians 11, where he says that we don't have uh, any such rule for the other churches of God. So then again, we can uh, note from there that it's not a rule. You know, people who want to cover their head, women, they can. Those who don't want to, it doesn't really affect you know, our worship unto God in a public gathering. Yeah, so that's an additional point. Yes. Yeah. A anything else, uh, class, that you would like to discuss? In this regard, okay, I think the biblical base quite uh, clear uh, so women can be encouraged uh, one of the things that you know i would also add to it is that in several cultures you know women are discouraged um, 
because of the cultural you know the the whole cultural mindset mm, so it, it uh, in the in the like from you know my observation and uh, what i hear others say it is difficult for women to to minister and to stay in ministry you might find that they will minister for some time and then they you know because they don't get much support they kind of give up so uh, because of these cultural reasons it could be said that you know encouraging women or supporting women and not mean that you know we are doing something extra to um, you know tell them to minister but you know just being around just being positive about women ministering can be a great encouragement for a lot of women otherwise what happens uh, you know because of the cultures uh, women either they don't step up or if they do step up um, eventually they want to give up right so i uh, just I, i just want to add that note because i we're all in the ministry and we will have women uh, around so we can be positive and encouraging for to women uh, yes yes mangi yeah go ahead okay thank you pastor um i have a yeah. question based uh, yeah. on, on what we are talking speaking now um mm. i know we are living in a modern era i think it's post modern era and mm. we still have some places like arabic world where uh like saudi arabia women are regarded second class and women can cannot take center stage or lead some leadership roles or let's take for example mm. afghanistan where women are not allowed to to lead no to walk with a covering their heads so in case we plant the church in afghanistan how mm. do you handle that mm. do you mm. tell women so, to cover their heads in the church or what do we do thank you pastor mm. yeah thank you mangi thank you for that so see mangi we will understand uh, what the bible says okay so uh, it's not about you know one particular country's culture or one particular community's culture uh, we are talking about kingdom culture kingdom culture so what does the bible prescribe uh, can women minister yes do they always need to have head covering no okay so all these things are clear but now coming back to the cultural context okay uh, so it is like it is possible that in some places yeah, you know it 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 might be like a pioneering work where it's hard at first to to uh, have a woman minister and then for people to accept it but we might have to make that journey okay to to break that tradition and uh, and it it can be very difficult again you need god's wisdom and discernment to do it mm, so uh, yeah in in a place like afghanistan and all you know to go uh, counter culture like that i don't think it is easy uh, but it can be done in uh, how do i say it not like in a rebellious way but i think it can be uh, done okay uh, so yeah that, that's what i would say uh, but then again uh, you know sometimes what happens if there is like a one off ministry uh, uh, opportunity mangi like for example i'll tell you sometimes when we go to the north of india there are some places where the people may not be open um, uh, to you speaking if you don't wear a head covering okay so uh, like when we go for missions and things like that as part of our guidelines we will also tell the women like you have to dress in the like the indian attire uh, you know salwar kameez with with the uh, dupatta on your head uh, that is just to see we are going there as a one off thing and uh, we want them to receive from us so we don't want you know our clothes or the head covering to become an issue of contention uh, we believe that you don't need it however it's just like one opportunity one window of opportunity so why argue about all these matters we follow their rules 
uh, if they say yeah okay you have to wear this color whatever whatever yeah that's all fine we just go minister and uh, you know have the head covering preach come back so yeah that's what i would like to say and i hope it makes sense yeah yes it does thank you boss yeah yeah sure yeah thank you yes but it is hard enough to have uh, you know women share uh, you know sometimes we we've, we've had that we you know people will be like what are you saying you know there are three women doing three different things how could you let women take the sessions so then we don't say anything about it we just you know hopefully that is counter culture and eventually that will help them realize that hey the bible doesn't really put a limit on which gender can minister yeah okay all right so any more questions or are we ready to wrap up this topic all right i, I think we've uh, spoken enough and there's enough clarity so uh, let's uh, go forward then uh, thank you everyone for those questions now uh, the next topic here is about systems and processes within the local church so systems and processes um, are for organization uh, and uh, i i think you are also studying this in another course if i'm not wrong so i'm just going to go over this you know Uh, quickly uh, so we need to have you know some some way of managing uh, the activities of the church so systems putting systems and processes in place uh, will will help us more efficient so what are what are the reasons uh, you know for being organized in a uh, in the local church uh, context if we are organized we can be excellent if we are organized we can ensure proper functioning you know of the uh, church activities and uh, we can also see multiplication and growth or in the words you know today uh, we are all familiar with with the cop we can scale things become scalable we can impact more people and uh, whatever we are doing you know it can uh, it can really bless Uh, people's lives so that is the reason why we need to have uh, some order some organization and thereby systems processes in place uh, so in this chapter we are going to look at um various processes but they are divided um in like with the understanding of the human body you know in the human body we have systems we have a circulatory system we have a skeletal system respiratory system so on and so forth but all these systems working together ensure uh, a healthy body and in the same way for a local church to be healthy what are the systems that will help so in we are using the 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 human body language here okay but uh, these these things have to do with the local church so the various systems that we need in the local church we need a circulatory system now in the human body circulatory system it um, ensures the flow of blood to every organ every part of the body and thereby there is a uh, good care and good nurture of the physical body and in the same way in the local church we need to have some systems uh, which will ensure that people are being nurtured they are being cared for so again uh, for every local church the programs that they adopt the processes that they go by can be specific to that local church so this is not like a you know these are the the you have to uh, you know uh, incorporate these things in your local church it's not like that but there are just some examples that we want to put out there which will help uh, you know functioning of the local church so in the circulatory system uh, an opportunity for one on one mentoring so if there is one on one mentoring obviously you know people will be enriched people will be guided people will be strengthened to continue in the faith so that 
that can be uh, done. We can also have small groups. We know that small groups have, uh, they help people connect better. And so, uh, you know, people will, will have relationships. Uh, and so there'll be somebody to speak into the life of another person, teach them God's word, uh, and, uh, you know, keep helping them grow up in God. So small groups will help uh, as part of the nurture in a local church. There can also be something uh, called the member care, member care team. So member care team at APC, you know, what we do is we have a specific ministry uh, or a part, like it is, um, you know, it's something that we do intentionally, member care. As part of the member care, there are a couple of processes that we have. There's something called one phone call in which we you know, regularly make phone calls to our uh, members of our congregation just to ask them how they are doing, you know, how they're keeping. So at least we know, you know if they are in a uh, situation of need, we can address it. So uh, things like that. Then under member care, you could put your own uh, you know, uh, processes. Under member care, there, there is, uh, you know, taking, if someone is sick, then, then how do you take care of that person? Uh, if someone, somebody is in, in a, a difficult situation, uh, you know, there are different needs. It could be a financial need. It could be, um, you know, an accident that has taken place. So many things can happen. So how to um, step into those situations and be to those families? So you can actually, you can actually that out maybe you have small teams response teams that step up that will help people in their situation so they can member care team they can also be specialized counselors because we know that you know people are in need of uh, uh, counseling regarding uh, you know their marriage issues need of counseling regarding you know various could be other relationships in church, you know, a strife, division. Uh, there can be need for counseling for young adults with regard to their career. So there can be these specialized needs. So basically, we look at the congregation, we understand the needs, and then we come up with solutions. So these are all just some examples. You could pick from these or have your own, um, you know, necessary activities uh, there can also be regular seminars seminars on topics that are relevant so if there are uh, young families in the church maybe marriage seminar parenting seminar uh, you know uh, uh, managing one's finances these could be relevant topics if there are a lot of working professionals uh, you could have a workplace uh, related seminar so all of this will strengthen and nurture the believers now let's look at the skeletal system okay skeletal system is nothing but the um, uh, the structure that supports okay so that forms the support of the human body and similarly for the local church you know the good leadership proper leadership mm, then the organization the way things are organized the way um, uh, the administration is planned out. All of this will strengthen. It will uh, provide a framework you know, for uh, other things to be done. So we must make sure that you know, we are working on all these areas. And how to raise up these strong leaders? I think we've already discussed that uh, under another topic. So we won't go you know, in a detailed manner into that. But we know that strong leaders make strong churches. So uh, one must really invest in building leaders. Okay, next would be your muscular system. Muscular system ensures strength and mobility. So in the same way for a local church, strength and mobility will come from equipped, equipped people. So how can we equip people? Uh, we can plan for training sessions we can plan for mentoring sessions we can have uh, you know some hands-on experience sort of sessions when it comes to uh, ministering how to minister how to be a minister of god to prophesy we can have all of these equipping sessions that will strengthen the people and that will make them confident in um, uh, serving wherever god has called them 
so trainings can be done one on one mentoring can they can also be um, like a general uh, general teaching from the pulpit as well now we that is helpful but uh, if we really want people to gain confidence you know, especially in in ministering the gifts of the spirit and areas like that one would also need to plan additional trainings okay so uh, look at your congregation look at where they are at and then uh, plan accordingly for them to uh, very confident okay uh, along with this we could create opportunity people to minister one thing is to learn another thing is to actually live it out okay to practice those things so the church if we have um, uh, you know comes where people can use those gifts then that will also bring rapid growth in their lives so we can do that give them opportunity to minister okay so there are few few aspects listed here uh, but you could pick whatever would be relevant for you next would be the digestive system okay digestive system has to do with strong nourishment your regular food regular uh, meals of the day okay uh, balanced meal uh, that is um, providing nourishment of all your macro nutrients micro nutrients everything that you need to be alive so in the same way for a believer in a local church to be strengthened and nourished uh, some of the key things that uh, we must look at uh, or be careful about is the ministry of the word from the pulpit now if that is in a strong way in a planned way uh, in a way as led by the holy spirit obviously people will be strong they will be equipped in the lord then in addition to that you know the, the yes we do address certain subjects from the pulpit but there's always more questions isn't it you know there's there there are subjects that uh, individually we want to uh, meditate on individually you know, i i am focused on okay on the word of god what are what is the value of the word of god how can i apply the word of god so if there are additional resources where, uh, that one can use that will help them in their work so maybe uh, these resources can be publications you know, similar to what we have here at ac uh, nowadays we know we're moving more towards the digital uh, platform so we could have resources online can have pdf you can have uh, you know certain uh, podcasts just talk about it you know there's explore uh, various various um, mediums and make the resources available then uh, encourage people not just to be equipped uh, only by the ministry of the local church but we can also be open for people to receive from what god is doing in the global body of christ because we know that you know there is always a move of god uh, and, and you know god uh, if you look at church history right the way he moves uh, the things that he brings focus to uh, that there is something god is doing in the larger body of christ so we must encourage people not just to receive from the local church but also to you know, keep their eyes open on what god is doing in the global body of christ yeah and basically you know um, promote a learning culture and in that way you know people will be uh, equipped and they will be strong now the next system is the respiratory system okay? and when we talk about the respiratory system it's all about breathing uh, you know it's about life okay so if you compare that uh, with with what the bible has to say the work of the spirit isn't it that brings the freshness of the holy spirit into our lives so how can we maintain the freshness uh, 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 of the work of the spirit in our congregations how can we have the inspiration of the holy spirit you know this can be done by uh, allowing uh, or, or making room for personal as well as corporate times of prayer corporate times of worship Okay. so we're letting the spirit move we're letting the spirit work we're letting the spirit minister to us and god is able to impart new things into us okay. and uh, we can also we've already talked about equipping people 
in the gifts of the spirit uh, but there can be opportunities for people to move in the gifts of the spirit okay and we know that the the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit you know scriptures say it is for the benefit of all so when the believers in the local body start to manifest you know the gifts of the spirit uh, it's actually bringing the freshness of the work of god uh, in our midst so i love the work of spirit in our midst that is the respiratory system moving on nervous system okay nervous system um you know we are aware it's about picking up information it's about you know relaying information sensitivity uh, response so just the way you know for for the human body you touch something hot and immediately you you have a, a response to that to protect yourself so in the same manner for the local church there has to be a mechanism to find out uh, what things are you know uh, the the things that can uh, damage or the things that can destroy what god is doing in the local body we we need to pick up on those things quickly and have a response to it so uh what you know what what are some of those aspects you know maybe uh, there is gossip you know um going around in the so how can you pick up on it quickly and then address the matter we have to uh, be sensitive we have to address the matter we also have to act quickly right so uh, for this again we can have some processes in mind okay uh, and whenever something comes to our attention we must not leave it for tomorrow but we must deal with it quickly so that the rest of the body is not affected by um you know something wrong that is happening all right endocrine system endocrine system uh, it's more like you know it controls the body but in a in an invisible way okay so you have all these hormones that are regulating our functions and uh, uh, you know they they're just there but what if they're not there if they're not there then you know we talk about uh, certain kinds that people present with maybe a diabetes or a thyroid issue because that hormone is not functioning it's not sufficient uh, so in the same way you know there there need to be certain reminders in the local body which we may not talk about from the pulpit directly often you know these things are part of the fiber of the local church okay and when these things are um uh did when these things are repeated from time to time it just helps the body function normally it just helps the the body function effectively okay. so that is about the endocrine system so what what are all these aspects this could be um Uh, you know uh, like the the vision of the church which can be repeated often you know, then people will know what it is uh, we can talk about some of our core values what are our core values yeah these are all important subjects but you know it's there it's 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 always um uh, incorporated into the messages so every sunday a pastor may not preach on the vision but maybe the vision is part of the announcements and it happens every sunday quickly you know the vision is stated now the vision can be a part of the brochures that you print you know the vision can be a part of your website so everywhere people look they know hey this is the vision of our church these are the values that we live by so it's there okay but um, maybe not as you know uh, directly as from the pulpit preached again and again so that is like your endocrine system where you have these essentials and they uh, help you be effective then of uh, you know there is the excretory system you know the body is very careful to to um uh, eliminate the unnecessary uh, things from the system because let it stay long then it can become toxic uh, and uh, uh, dangerous for the human in the same way you know coming to the local church we must ensure that we are eliminating unhealthy 
you know an unhealthy culture unhealthy practices uh, so again you know the list would um, uh, have things like gossip backbiting division having factions in the church strife selfish interest um self promotion so whatever is is like the work of the flesh okay and we identify that we have to find a way to address it appropriately and deal with it quickly because if we don't deal with it you know uh it stays on and it becomes toxic so it if it was affecting two people uh in the beginning it starts affecting 50 people you know if we let it uh continue so we have to filter these things out and in addition to you know the processes that we follow maybe we want to meet one on one and you know the uh, all that we talked about in church discipline uh beyond that we can also ensure that you know we have times of prayer and repentance and a genuine fellowship among the people which will strengthen you know strengthen the body uh, which will help everyone see that hey we can't have the works of the flesh in our midst so the excretory system basically get rid of the unhealthy culture unhealthy practices reproductive system so we need to have a system in place that will ensure uh, increase okay increase uh, and reproductive system you know it, it's like continuous multiplication and that's what we want in the um, in the context of the church jesus said you know go into all the world make disciples so we our heart is for many many people know the gospel you know many disciples to um uh, be prepared you know to to give witness for the resurrection power of christ so multiplication how can we multiply we need to think about this you know sometimes what happens you know churches can become that cozy unit we are very happy you know we are in our own salt shaker and everything is going good okay uh, maybe we are living by god's principles and we are being the pillar of truth then um you know we are being a voice to the nation and all however we have to think of others because great commission is the mission of the church we can never forget when we talk about the reproductive system it has to do with the great commission so what is it that the local church can do to win more souls for the kingdom you know we may um come up with you know certain uh, certain um you know outreaches in our locality we can come up with some outreaches on the internet we can come up in outreaches as part of our sunday you know sunday programs or we can encourage equip people on evangelism wherever they are going they are working they know how to share the you know how to um win souls for the kingdom so like this that's where the multiplication comes in uh, and then also equip on missions equip people about uh, discipleship uh, and so the entire church is involved you know in impacting the city uh, and and that makes a huge difference but what if that doesn't happen you know we we kind of stagnate we stagnate in our own circle uh, and that's not healthy that's not healthy and you know um, there is a course uh, i think this will be in your next semester it's about Mm, the apostolic okay uh, the apostolic church so more and more we see that god is raising up churches that okay sorry everyone there's some issue with my internet so i was saying that god is raising up churches uh, that are planting more churches okay so uh, that is also part of our multiplication you know we can be a very um, functional and an effective church but you know we're also looking at um, raising up you know new new bodies of believers so uh, that all of this has to do with the reproductive system of the church so it's a simple way basically for us to ensure that the the local church sun body is functional and healthy okay and the uh, processes that one adopts as i already said it can be specific to your own uh, context all right uh, 
Now here there is also an additional note about local church ministries and ministry teams. Um, for us to be organized and serve well, uh, we have to meet uh, uh, I mean, um, we, we have to have all the systems in place. So that is one thing. Now, there can be needs in the congregation, and we must address those needs with the relevant ministries. Okay. So based on the needs, uh, you know, one can have a ministry for, let's say, if there are a lot of young adults in the church, then you definitely need, you know, a young adult ministry. If there are uh, children in the church, that one definitely needs you know, children's ministry. If there are um, uh, single parents in the church, then maybe you know there is a need to address that area and strengthen those people, right? So you might want to do something specific to that. So one needs to come up with ministries, or rather, be led by the spirit to have the right ministries, okay, in a local body. And also have ministry teams. Now, for each ministry to function, we would need a leader. We would need, you know, uh, maybe if there is a need for some full-time paid staff, then yes, we, we would uh, hire them. And uh, in addition to that, maybe some volunteers also are required. So uh, in this way, you know, we can set up the ministries and the work can go on. Okay, here uh, the, the, in this uh, section, there are some examples presented from you know the the way at APC, and uh, it says there are ministries and teams that are centered around ministry functions. There are ministries and teams that are centered around felt needs. Ministries and teams that are centered around specific events. Okay, so ministry functions meaning, <clears throat> let's say the prophetic. So have teams uh, which can engage the prophetic. You know, they know how to function in that. So they come together. All right. Uh, ministries that are based on felt needs, you know, uh, let's say um, counseling, counseling. So there can be a team of people who are specialized in counseling, you know, upper, um, uh, mental disorder, something like that. So they come together to be an answer to that problem. Then centered around specific events. So this is like, for example, here we have uh, conferences. We every year, you know, the, we have certain specific conferences, women's conference. So there are teams very specific to that conference. And every year we kind of come together just for that one event. There are, you know, team members we work. The conference is done, you know, that, that team is disbanded. So in that way, there can also be teams that are more specific events. So just some examples, uh, you know, we could apply it uh, as relevant. Okay, and uh, there, there is a list actually mentioned from the APC teams. So uh, there is a list of teams that are centered around ministry functions, it says worship team, prayer and intercession team, life group, alpha group, missions teams, performing arts teams, school outreach team, we call it the catalyst, college outreach team, <clears throat> it's called campus elements, counseling, it says chrysalis counseling ministry, uh, you know, and so on. So these teams, again, they have people of, um, different age groups um, and you know uh, uh, some teams require a lot of training whereas you know some other teams uh, you probably have those trained people you know come together and and serve um, so yeah in this way you know, people can serve mm. then some ministries here at APC that are focused on felt needs Children's ministry, youth ministry, young adults, marriage enrichment, men's ministry, women's ministry. Okay, so those are examples. Uh, centered around specific events, it can be your Sunday service. Su Sunday service also is a huge event. So Sunday servant, uh, service specific. Different teams in, in a given Sunday service. There's a track 
team hospitality team you know parking resource table so you know different ones are listed here and, and as i said earlier you know your conferences youth camp church camp so uh, these are some of the teams and what is the good thing about these teams one is they have uh, the heart to serve okay they have the same common goal you know to achieve uh, a certain you know to have excellence uh, to make sure that people are impacted and all that so every team will have its goal okay that they are aiming at and in these teams people tend to form relationships okay uh, and when relationships happen you know whatever we discussed earlier the, the whole circulatory system so uh, you nurture one another you strengthen one another one another and thereby the church is also strengthened so basically we we are talking about having these structures okay having some systems having some processes having some teams okay and this will enable us to um uh, you know be an effective local church all those uh, aspects of the blueprint that we've seen the local church should be the army it should be the the body you know it it should be this and it should be all of that can be lived out you know in 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 uh, in an organized way and we can achieve more so the last note here uh, is about um, having room for spontaneity since we are talking about structure uh, it's good to always throw in uh, a note there and say hey we will organize in this way however if the spirit of god you know allows us to move slightly differently you know do things slightly uh, in a different manner then we must not become very rigid and uh, say that hey no this is the system this is the process and it's never going to change right so if you become rigid like that then we will become ineffective so have a structure have a system but don't become rigid always be open always be flexible for god to work so i think it's uh, this is a very very practical subject that we've covered just now yeah so any any thoughts on that i think it's quite straightforward in fact okay uh, charles says cells make tissue tissues make an organ organs make systems and systems make an organism okay yeah that's right yeah so these systems will help make the local church better yeah any any additional thoughts okay let's think what if there are no systems there's a local church and we don't want systems how would that look thank you very much um that's one thing i wanted to ask when when there's no system you know how do we how do we manage in the local church or how do we operate in the local church because one thing for me right now is that in my own church as in the one I'm in right now there's mm -hmm. no system at all and it's so difficult you know to like regulate things everybody's just doing things to do the way they feel like doing it and to be crazy so in such situations how do you how do you cope or how do you manage things and still serve god you know the way that pleases him not the way that pleases man thank you yeah thank you harrison a good question uh again you know depending on your capacity in church you can offer to help right uh, and see if something can be put in and place just, and just to add and when you uh, don't have you know position of authority so we yeah, you you don't have any right you know to say anything or bring any change or do anything you know to bring that change so it becomes you know super difficult so how do you work with that 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, maybe you could offer, um, you know, you could offer your ideas. Is what I would say, Harrison. Like maybe put it down on paper. You know, write out. Um, you know, uh, like some guidelines, some flow, a process, and propose it to your your pastor or the ministry team leader uh, over there and say, hey. i just had these thoughts what do you think and what i'm saying is we can do our part maybe see not everybody is great with these systems so uh we can offer help and who knows you know they they might be really adopt that and they might like the way it works and that can um uh, spill over to other ministries you know and systems can come in place Yeah, just a suggestion because you're saying. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. Okay. okay. Can I say something? Right, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charles, just a moment, Charles. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You could please. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Charles. Um, please go ahead. When, it, when the church has no ministry, or rather, when the church has no system. as we looked uh, around the respiratory system the nervous system the endocrine system all these systems make up the organ that's why i sent that part like cells make a tissue a tissue may mm. tissues make organs and when when you get organs combined together they make a system and when you get systems combined together they make an organism now an organism is a complete entity it's it's something that has all the systems now mm. when when a, an organism is lacking a system it is malfunctioning it is not working well mm. so now what happens when there is no system when when something has no systems then that organism ceases to exist because it will be temporary so a church without systems will really 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 be at the verge of collapse mm. because at least there would be prayer and worship at least there would be maybe some processes of providing feedback directly to leadership at least one but it can't be that the church has no systems maybe these systems have not been streamlined or grouped mm. as they have been grouped according to our course so a uh, brother no digo um even if you would not have a, a direct leadership role but uh, the truth is this those systems are there but they have not been nurtured they need to be nurtured and as pastor nancy was saying you offer help i thank you yeah thank okay, you okay just to Thanks. i want to chip in some things okay yeah i love and what um, brother charles and you know, said yes you know the the system okay uh, uh, harrison sorry to interrupt uh, i think we are kind of out of time here so what i would say is uh, to those who need to leave the call please feel free to do so okay those who want to stay on you can stay on okay all right yes thank you. please continue harrison all right um there is a system but it's not effective and now talking about help or putting up you know some ideas you know, that can bring you know the change or make maybe make the system effective sincerely speaking i'm not just only the one you know bringing ideas there are many people there are so many people who have brought in ideas and there's one thing i also believe that okay even if you bring in ideas and the same old culture is there it will eat you know your strategy for launch you know one thing i'm trying to say now is that when the culture of that system is not working we may need to change first you know the culture before you introduce a new system mm. so okay. for me right now is something that when it comes to helping i've been doing my own part you know because one i'm a tech guy so i've used media you know to like you know building you know, or some things you know 
for the church, you know, just to bring um, some rules and regulations that can help the church, you know, grow. And sincerely, it's really helping the church grow. But you know what you know you're aiming at. You know what you know you're pursuing. You know what you're trying to. You know the change you know you're trying to bring in. But when you have you know the same old culture playing in the in the new strategy, then you don't see the effectiveness. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so I think, you know, you're on the right track. So just do your best. That's all I would say. Let's see. So, so uh, yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Also, Charles, thank you for sharing. I'll quickly okay. answer Abraham's question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, he says, Sabas, please, what is the first system that should be implemented? You know, we're so grateful God doesn't Send us in bits and pieces, right, uh, Abraham? You don't just get the lungs. Only the lungs are not born. The whole system is born. So I think everything is important. But if you ask me what is, what could be the priority, I, I would say respiratory system. Like if you can't breathe, then, you know, you're not alive. So, you know, uh, so yeah, I, I would just say that. And okay, thank you, everyone. I let you go. You have another class. So do I. Okay, so have a blessed day. Uh, and uh, I, I hope to post your uh, next assignment today. Okay, so then you can also complete it in time and we can complete this course in time. All right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye for thank now. God bless. Thank you.